hello my like light is moving before i get into this beautiful tank video i just wanted to say there are a few things different i cut my hair off why did you chop it off i'm actually a huge fan of long hair that's really what i like so I know it doesn't make much sense that I chopped my hair off, but, but it was actually just really damaged from all of the work that I've had done on it. Obviously, I took the pink out of the hair. I loved it for about two days, and then I started feeling like I was a preteen who was rebelling against her parents by going to Hot Topic and grabbing a bottle of Manic Panic in the color pink and pouring it on her head. I just felt really, really young with the hair, and I'm already young enough. I don't need to look any younger. And then my hair was really damaged, so I was just like, you know what, just, just cut it off. It was there, now it's here. So, whatever. If I get bored of it, I have extensions, so I can really switch it up. Yeah, and that's really, that's the main difference. My hair's short and it's pink. Lately, no, it's not pink. It's not pink. Lately, all my videos, even though they're about animals, have been opening up talking about my hair. I'm sorry about that. I've just been doing a lot of changes to it and I like to address that. Okay, one more thing before I get this video started. It is the most random thing Y'all aren't even gonna understand why I brought this up. It's really bothering me really bad. How many of you guys have seen the show Stranger Things? A good number of y'all, right? Good number of you guys. Okay, so how many of y'all who have seen Stranger Things has also played the video game Mass Effect? I think I lost everyone here. I don't know how popular the game really is anymore, and of course with my viewers who are here for animal care, they might not know anything about video games. I really don't know where all of, what all y'all's hobbies are. But, okay, the game Mass Effect and the show Stranger Things. Do they use the same music? I'm pretty sure they do. And I know y'all probably are like, what? But I'm so serious, it drives me nuts. Okay, so now that I've probably lost all of you guys and you fell asleep watching me talk about hair and video games, um, let's get started on the actual topic of this video. I have this beautiful tank behind me and it is beautiful, obviously. I'm going to be starting today the first of a series of videos about how to set up a freshwater tank. In my tank, I'm going to be making it a planted tank, so there is going to be a lot of information in these videos about planted tanks, but if you aren't looking to do a planted tank and you're just going to do fish only, you could still watch these videos and learn a lot and know exactly how to set up a tank for your fish. Before I get started, um, let me just address that everything you see in this tank comes from buseplant.com, including the tank itself. If you like the aquascaping and the tank and the substrate, all you have to do is go to buseplant.com. You can find all those products there and you can use my discount code, TaylorDeanBuse, to get 15% off. You're welcome. I'm refilming this now and of course I'm gonna use some of the footage that I did yesterday through the process of setting it up, but when it comes to the facts, I am here to tell you it all again. First thing you need to decide when you're getting a tank is what size tank you want. Different size tanks can of course only hold certain types of fish and a certain number of fish. So you really need to first decide, even before what tank you want, what kind of fish you want. And that will really help you determine what size tank you want. If you really don't know much about fish and you're still just very new to the hobby, there is a very quick way to go ahead and see all the kinds of fish that are out there and what size tanks they need. When I was new to the aquarium hobby, I actually used liveaquaria.com. I would just go to their freshwater section, scroll through, click fish I like, and it would tell me, you know, their basic needs, their minimum tank size, all of that. So that's a really good idea for anyone that's new to the hobby is just to go to that website. After you decide what fish and what tank you want, you need to decide on a location for your tank. Location actually can be very important. You really don't want to put a tank by a window. The direct sunlight coming from the window is just gonna cause insane algae. You're gonna have really, really bad algae problems. It's gonna be really, really hard to maintain your water parameters at a good level. So it, please just avoid putting them by a window. This one's actually pretty close to a window, but it's closed and I never ever ever open the window. Why do you think I'm so pale? I do it for the fish. I stay pale for the fish. Now you have your tank, but you can't just fill it up with water and be done, of course. You have a lot of steps you need to take to really make it ready and prepared for any kind of fish you're ready to bring home. First thing you need is a filter. There's a few options for filtration. You can do canister filters, hang on back filters, and sumps. For this video specifically, I'm only gonna be talking about hang on back filters and canister filters. I'm gonna go ahead and leave sumps out and do a whole video on sumps in the future. So a hang on back filter is a filter that literally hangs on the back. I do have one right here for this tank and this is actually only temporary. I am switching to a canister filter, but my canister filter needed some extra supplies, so I'm waiting for those to come in the mail. Until then, 
for using this. Hang on back filters are great, especially if you're not gonna have that many fish in your tank. They really do the job. Hang on back filters come with a set amount of filtration media. You can either get the hang on back filters that only come with the carbon, which is your chemical filtration. All that's gonna do is take out any impurities in your water and once a month, you need to throw out your carbon packet and get a new carbon packet. Then there's other types of filters like this marine land that I have in here that has two types of filtration in there, which is chemical and biological. The second type is a bio wheel in this case, and that is a place for beneficial bacteria to grow and really help keep your water clean. Then there's other filters like the Fluval and AquaClears that have three types of filtration. That will be mechanical, biological, and chemical. Of course, for most tanks, the more filtration media you have, the better your water is gonna be. But if you do a really good job with your water changes and you keep up with your tank and monitor your levels, a hang on back filter will work great for you. You just really need to watch your levels like your nitrates and your ammonia to make sure that the filter is truly doing its job. The other kind of filter that I'm going to talk about in this video are canister filters and these are filters that take place out of the tank. They sit under the tank and have tubing that transport the water in and out of the tank. The thing I love about canister filters is that you literally have limitless options when it comes to what kind of filtration media you want to store in your canister. So you can really decide exactly what your tank needs and give it to it. I love that about canister filters. The only downside to canister filters is that they require a lot of cleaning and maintenance. More than just throwing out your old filtration media and buying new filtration media, you're actually going to need to clean the whole thing out thoroughly about once a month. It is a longer process, but you do get a lot more filtration and you, you can normally stock the tank heavier with more success and it also just looks nicer because you don't have the big thing hanging on the back of your tank. Also, let me just say, if you get a type of filter that has biological media, you never need to change out that biological media. You can leave it there and never have to throw it out and buy new ones unless something happens, like if it breaks. Next thing you're gonna need, most likely, is a heater. If you're getting any kind of tropical fish, they need a heater. Their water needs to be at least 78 degrees and that is what a heater will do for you. If you're wondering what types of fish don't need a heater, goldfish and hill stream loaches are some of the few. They are cold water species and they like it chilly. And although goldfish don't need a heater, they do need a very good filter and a large tank because they are filthy and they do get very large. Next thing you need to think about is lighting. If you're gonna be doing a fish only aquarium, you just need some sort of light that reaches every area of the tank and you leave it on for six to eight hours a day. It doesn't matter what kind of light you're doing, you know, fluorescent, LED, whatever it may be. As long as they get lighting for at least six hours, preferably eight, they're gonna be good. If you're gonna be doing a planted tank, the lighting gets a little more complicated. I think it's best to have a light that gives off at least 20 watts of electricity. That is going to be the most efficient for your tank. This tuna sun right here runs on 40 watts, so it is brighter. It also really depends on what kind of plants you're gonna have. If you only are getting plants that require very low lighting, you can get away with a 10 watt. I really would stick to at least 20. That's a whole nother story. I'm trying to just cover the basics right now. Next thing you need to think about is aquascaping, basically how you're going to design the tank. Live plants are always a great way, it makes very natural environment for fish. But if you're gonna be doing fake plants, just really make sure you know what kind of fish you're getting and what the fake plants are made out of. Because a lot of times those plastic plants can really damage fins on a fish. So you really just gotta make sure that whatever type of decorations you're using, they are safe for your fish. I'm using Oco Stone in my tank for aquascaping, in addition to plants that will come when my tank is ready. This Oco Stone I got from Buseplant.com, like I said, you can just go there and order it and it comes directly to you. This is also known as Dragonstone. I just really love the way it looks. Let me zoom in on there. I just really love the way that looks. It's just so beautiful. Now when it comes to what kind of substrate you want to use, again it depends on what you are stocking in your tank. If you're going to be doing plants, you really need a plant substrate. Something specifically that is going to promote plant growth. It's also important to keep in mind that there are certain types of fish that like to bury themselves in sand. So please make sure again you know the specific needs of your fish. You know if you should be using gravel or sand. When it comes to where you get your water, this is somewhat important when it comes to freshwater tanks, but not nearly as important as it would be when you get into salt water. For fresh water, you definitely can just use tap water, but please just make sure you get a good conditioner and condition that water every single time you do a water change. Please don't ever add just tap water straight up into your tank without conditioning it first, because then your fish will be very sad. If you're gonna use tap water, please put a conditioner in there. I like to use a general water conditioner and, um, well crap, I don't know where it went. 
I like to use Seachem Prime as well. I really, really like that product. It's really good. It gets out nitrates in your tank. Then your other options, of course, are purified water, which is considered a little safer. And then there is RODI water. I use RODI water in all my tanks. I will do a separate video about RODI water as well. But basically for RODI water, you just get an RODI unit, you set it up in your house and it makes water for your aquarium. So with that being said, although purified water is a little safer than tap water, there are some things in purified water that, you know, are still there. I can't really think of any freshwater fish that will die if they aren't given RODI water. While there are some saltwater species that need it. I'm gonna show you how I set this up yesterday. I kind of mentioned in the video from yesterday that it's really best to fill your aquarium up with water and then add your decorations. I only say this because if you're gonna be using any kind of substrate in your aquarium, if you put that in first and then add the water, it's gonna cloud your water up really badly. I actually did that for the sake of the video to show you guys what it looks like. A way to avoid that cloudiness is by filling the tank up with the water first and then scooping out the substrate from the bag it is in and slowly pouring it across the bottom of the tank using a cup. That really helps avoid getting all of that nasty, dusty, cloudy water. If you do get it though, please don't worry. It should go away within the first 12 hours. It clears up really fast, normally, normally quicker than that. Okay, there's the tank. We have a light. I think I should just leave the tank like this and tell people they're crazy when they say there's nothing in it. This is contra soil. This is what I'm using for my 20 gallon tank. I had added the substrate. My camera overheated and shut off, so I've just been here drinking soda at 3.30 a.m. I'm a great example. You all already see why you should add the water first. This is why you want to wash your materials first before putting them in the tank. And if you're using plant substrate, instead of washing it first, all you do is you add your water, and then you slowly scoop out the plant substrate, from the container and plop it in here instead of doing it first because this is what happens when you do it first. Once you get your tank set up and running, that does not mean you're ready just to go out and grab fish. You need to let your tank cycle. Basically, this is a process that takes anywhere from six days to two weeks, really depending on your tank. During this time, your tank water establishes and gets a control over nitrates, nitrites, ammonia, etc. A really good way to help kickstart your cycle is by doing ghost feedings, which basically means you're gonna feed your tank every day as if they had a bunch of fish in there, and then you're just gonna let your tank suck up all the waste from your fish. Food. It's always best to have some sort of test kit for your water. You really want to make sure your ammonia is at zero, your nitrates are below five, preferably zero since there's nothing in there to begin with, your nitrites are at zero. If you're going to be doing planted tanks, it's really good to get some kind of aquarium test kit that can test phosphates and trace elements that are both good and bad for plants. In my next video, I'll be showing you guys how to acclimate fish, how to add them to your aquarium, really just get going on this tank more in detail. And then in more videos to come, I'll talk about the progression of the tank, how to grow plants in your tank, how to maintain plants in your tank so they don't die, common illnesses you'll see in freshwater fish, etc. So thank you guys for watching. I hope y'all enjoyed my run through of this tank. And again, I got this wonderful tank from buseplant.com. So go ahead and give them a look. And yeah, that's really the video. I feel like I end all my videos with, and yeah, like don't know what else to say. And yeah. I did get some new seahorses. I'm going to be making some videos about them. I did get a new hedgehog cage. It's really awesome. I really, really love it. So I will be doing a video about my hedgehog cage. People keep asking about Solara. She's still doing okay. I mean, as good as it can be. She actually ate out of my hand yesterday, which is always a really good sign because she has not been very interested in food lately. So it was really cool to see her eat out of my hand. Oh, one last thing, one last thing. I set up a P.O. box, which is awesome, which means y'all guys can send me things. And I know y'all guys hate that I say y'all guys because it's like saying you all guys, but I don't know. I just have always said it and I don't want to unsay it. But yes, I got a P.O. box so you guys can send me 
whatever you want to send me. I'm going to be doing videos once a month opening up everything I get in my P.O. box and communicating with you guys about how I feel about the items. Just getting more personal with you guys and getting to know my subscribers and talking with you. If you send me something and you want me to mention your name or your YouTube name or your Twitter handle or Instagram handle, whatever it may be, just leave it in the item you send me and I will mention it when opening it in the video. I do have celiac so please do not send me anything that has gluten or wheat in it and if you don't know if it does and you send it just understand that if it's something you want to see me try like if you're from somewhere and you want to see me try a food y'all have I can't try it if it has gluten or wheat in it because I have celiac disease please don't send me a living animal I don't want a living animal in the box I don't want to go to my PO box and open it up and find a living animal that will make me very upset and sad I have enough animals and if I decide to get another one I will go out and get one I don't want it sent to me. You can even just send letters. Anything would be wonderful. I am just happy to interact with you guys and all that fun stuff. So this is my P.O. box and I will also put it in my description. Y'all guys can just send me whatever. So yeah, I'm really, really excited about that too. My first video for my P.O. box will probably be in November, unless for some reason it goes really well really fast, then I will do the end of October. So. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.